What up everybody? Time to do another video. We're going to do a knife review. And uh, <clears throat> you know this knife, there's 5,000 reviews on YouTube uh, for it. It's super, super popular. Uh, you know what? There needs to be one more. There needs to be my review, guys. <clears throat> because, uh, yeah, I said so. <laughs> um, like, my one more review is going to be a drop in the ocean of the reviews and press and talk about this model. And that's the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Alright, guys. I want to start out this video by saying... I'm not a huge Spyderco fan. Uh, this is the only Spyderco in my collection. And you know what? I, I just bought it fairly recently in the last year. Uh, you know, I sold Spydercos. And I have a tendency to like chunkier, uh, a little more heavy-duty built knives. And Spydercos, especially their classic core lineup, are lighter weight, uh, thinner edges, thinner tips, and I just, for some reason, I didn't have an appreciation for that. And I, I made a conscious decision uh, not long ago, a year ago, a year and a half ago, to start expanding my collection out and um, taking in some knives that normally I wouldn't have been interested in, and I started looking at Spyderco. And I knew the Paramilitary 2 was pretty much the Spyderco model, as far as the, the bigger models go. And, you know, I prefer the bigger knives. Uh, so, I, you know, I didn't want to get any of the smaller, uh, more pocket-friendly Delicas and Ladybugs and, you know, all of that stuff. So, I went looking at Paramilitary 2s. And this one caught my eye. Uh, I love the, the, what they call the dark blue, but what everybody affectionately refers to as blurple, uh, blue-purple. Uh, this semi-transparent, I mean, you can actually see right here that shadow. That's where you're seeing through that scale. It's a sort of a semi-transparent, uh, especially when you get around some bright light. But that really caught my eye. I love that color. It's not just a plain blue. It's not purple. Uh, it's got the sort of translucent qualities. And then, of course, it doesn't hurt that this thing, the blade steel, is CPMS 110V, which we'll get into later. But let's go ahead and, uh, you know, forget about what my interest is in Spyderco or not or whatever, and let's just talk about the knife. And we'll do a little history of the paramilitary, too. Uh, the original model was the paramilitary. Uh, it was introduced in 2004. You know, it featured the compression lock. Um, I don't. It wasn't the first knife to feature it, I don't think. But um, it was a young lock-in system at the time, or at the time. I'm sorry. And they came in black G10 handles with S30V blade steel. You could get it in a fine edge or in the spidey edge, the serrated edge. Um, in 2010, Spyderco went back and refined this model, made some changes in it, and re-released it as the Paramilitary 2. Uh, they improved the lock detent. They changed the handle uh, a little bit for better ergonomics. They countersunk the handle and pivot screws, and they added the four-position pocket clip uh, to it. And then in 2015, uh, you know, I mean, there was multiple iterations of this knife with handle materials and blade finishes and whatnot. But in 2015, we got this Blurple model with the S110V blade steel. Now, let's go ahead and knock out the specs because, uh, you know, nobody wants to listen to just numbers all the time. Um, the blade length on this, uh, now I measured all this myself. You know, they call the blade length 3.4 inches. I'm a rebel. I'm going to call it three and seven sixteenths. Okay, that's 87 millimeters. Uh, blade stock thickness, 145 thousandths of an inch or 3.67 millimeters. The blade width at the widest, 1.26 inches or 32 millimeters. The handle length, 
four and seven eighths inches or about 12 centimeters heavy a little bit more than 12 centimeters um, handle thickness 460 thousandths or 11.69 millimeters the handle width at the widest at the pivot 1.12 inches or 28.59 millimeters the closed width at the widest and of course that's going to be here at the spidey hole and that's 1.58 inches or 40.2 millimeters uh, overall length eight and five sixteenths of an inch um, 21 centimeters and the weight is 3.84 ounces or 109 grams now <clears throat> I'm going to add one more spec to my reviews on folders and I started that with the 4 max review that I posted yesterday and that's going to be stop pin diameter and the stop pin on this model is 197 thousandths of an inch or 5 millimeters and then of course for Spyderco we've got the spidey hole and this is the larger 14 and a half millimeter spidey hole so uh, the paramilitary tube is it like a downsized version of the military and I've owned the military in titanium in the frame lock and I actually do prefer this model uh, not for you know not because the military is too big but like I said I prefer a little chunkier knives and to me the blade on the military was just a little bit too long for how thin the stock was um, even though it is thin on the paramilitary 2, I think it's a better length to stock thickness ratio at this blade length. Um, so, I do prefer the paramilitary 2 over the military just for that reason, basically. And I actually, I like the compression lock also. Um, and typically, I'm a frame lock type of guy or... Um, you know, the regular military is in the liner lock. I'm not much of a liner lock fan, uh, which is funny because I love this compression lock. It's basically a modified liner lock. All right, now let, we'll go over materials. We'll talk about the lock in a little bit. Now, of course, we've uh, got a blade in CPM 110 SV. This steel is arguably the ultimate... Uh, stainless blade steel right now for wear resistance and edge retention i have not had to sharpen this knife but i have never sharpened 110 v it's supposed to be incredibly hard to sharpen incredibly wear resistant the more wear resistant it is to go and dull the more wear resistant it is to your sharpener um this steel has a good corrosion resistance not the best it's in the upper mid range of the very high end stainless steels but it does have superior wear resistance and edge retention and the edge on this is going to be a really toothy cutting uh, aggressively cutting edge and the reason is, is it has very high levels of vanadium and niobium both are carbide adders and carbide uh, carbides again are ultra hard particles that are suspended in the matrix of the steel now vanadium is a very common carbide adder it adds very hard carbides that are quite a bit harder than the steel matrix around it niobium is not as common it is a more expensive uh, alloying agent and carbide adder and it adds finer smaller carbides that are even harder than vanadium so the edge of this blade is just packed with ultra hard carbide particles that are going to make it uh, such an aggressive cutter and that's one of the reasons you've got the fantastic wear resistance um, this steel, a crucible particle metallurgy steel, good lord camera, um, is just right now, it is just the ultimate in uh, edge retention and wear resistance uh, across any of the steels that would be considered common. 
uh, commonly available, not commonly used. Now, the handle, of course, is in the, uh, the semi-transparent uh, dark blue Blurple G10. Uh, it has uh, a good texture. Um, it is highly textured for Spyderco, and I would call it medium texture if you were comparing it to cold steel. Uh, and I did a video comparing this to the Cold Steel American Lawman. You can watch that. And I cover uh, how similar the texture is on the G10. Now, it does feature stainless liners. They do not come out to the edge. You can see that they are nested. So the inside of that G10 is machined to receive those stainless liners. Uh, so that allows them to cut down on liner material, make it a little bit lighter, and you saw at less than 4 ounces uh, or 109 grams, it's a pretty lightweight knife. Alright, you've got stainless hardware in this instance. It's all in a, you know, a machine finished stainless, so it's a bright stainless. Um, you've got a bright stainless lanyard tube, and that is a tubed lanyard hole. Uh, so you don't have to try to feed your lanyard through one side and then, you know, you got the middle here. You got to snake it through and work it through to get it to the other side there. You don't have to worry about that. It is a tube to lanyard hole. Uh, and then it's built with stainless standoff and you have a polished stainless pocket clip. And just like, you know, the changes from the paramilitary to the paramilitary to, they did do a four position pocket clip for tip up right-handed as I have this you've got tip down also and then both options for left-handed um, you know what I think that overall as far as um, design aspects um, that make this knife easier to carry that's one of the better uh, design aspects on a spider Co. this four position pocket clip uh, a lot of manufacturers overlook how much of a convenience that is for their customers. Uh, because although tip up, right hand is going to be the most popular, some people like tip down. And some people are left handed. Uh, they're just born with messed up genetics. And they, you know, they use the wrong hand. Uh, they're still people. There's just not that many of them. So this is a great option if you are left-handed. Your lock is located in the center of the knife, so it's a pretty doggone ambidextrous knife. And that is a great design feature. Now, uh, we'll go into fit and finish. We'll talk about some ergos here. Uh, of course, you've got the classic Spyderco leaf-shaped blade. This is more the clipped uh shaped blade rather than the you know more radius more drop point version that you just find on like the manix uh you know i don't see any issues in fit and finish the the blade is a full flat grind uh, the grind is very even you can see the light reflect across it there there's no defects in the grind on either side um, it is in a satin finish it's well done you see your maker's marks for sal and eric uh, this is an American-made product, and you, on the front, you've got Spyderco, and then your steel designator. You've got your Spyderco uh, emblem. Everything is well-stamped and well-etched. Uh, the spidey hole is slightly chamfered. Um, it's not super soft at the edge, but it is not uh, coarse or cutting at all. Uh, it's I, it's comfortable for me, um, you know, it, it could have a bigger chamfer, I guess, but, I mean, really, who cares? Um, to me, it's, it's really comfortable. Now, uh, you do have uh, what is, in my opinion, some of the best jimping in the business on the thumb ramp portion of this blade. I love this jimping. I absolutely love it. It is something that Spyderco has got perfectly right. Um, it is aggressive enough and fine enough to grab your skin. I mean, it really does. But it's not uncomfortable in any way. There's no sharp edges to it. It's very comfortable. You've got the repeat of that down here. 
in the forward finger choil, the forward part of the forward or the finger choil. And um, you know what? It's it's just great jimping. I wish all knives had that good a jimping on it. The only knock that I will give this blade as far as a fit and finish, it doesn't really have anything to do with fit and finish, but it has to do with design. There is no sharpening choil. And you can see how that edge, you know, they've sharpened back as close to the plunge as they could get without getting into the plunge. And uh, sooner or later, I'll dull this knife, maybe. And uh, I'll have to get on it with the KME, and I'll tape this up real good. And I will get that all the way up to the plunge. I'm not going to add a sharpening choil to it or anything. But, um, you know, it's it's... Actually, there is a little itty bitty teeny tiny little I guess you could call that a sharpening choil. I honestly I never noticed that before until I got it in front of the camera close up. So that's like a little micro sharpening choil that obviously even the guys at the factory didn't feel comfortable with. So you know, you've got this little unsharpened section. That's the only ding I'm gonna give that blade. It is incredibly slicey. Um, good Lord, guys, this thing will slice like crazy. The combination of the, the CPMS 110V and the high flat grind, um, you've got a really thin edge. Um, it's 20 thousandths behind the edge. Um, you've got a really fine point. So guys, don't be prying with this thing. Number one rule with Spydercos, don't pry with it. Number two rule, don't drop it on its point on the blade tip because it will break the first time and I guarantee with this steel hardened as hard as it probably is probably around the 62 Rockwell range I guarantee that tip will snap off if you look at it the wrong way now the fit and finish on the handle fantastic as always with spider coat the machining on the G10 is perfect um, it is not, the radius on the edge is not a very open radius. Uh, it's pretty tight. Uh, so you've got sort of a flat slab side type of build. But the handle shape is just incredible, guys. Um, I actually wish that I would have jumped on the PM2 wagon um a little faster than I did because I really really like this handle design the fit and finish is exemplary uh, everything is finished well it's finished exactly the liners are you know the the countersunk liners are perfectly done uh, I mean everything just looks good guys I mean the pocket clip finish the hardware finish the lanyard tube finish standoff everything looks everything matches everything's machined well uh, everything lines up well uh, so no issues on this knife at all with fit and finish except maybe one thing and that's the centering now the action is fantastic the centering on mine is just a hair off towards the show side and spider code loctites their pivots and I have yet to be able to break this pivot loose to see if I can adjust that centering. I haven't put any heat on it uh, because the centering is not that bad. I mean, you can see that it's not that bad. Uh, the action is good on this. Uh, you know, it's PM2 action, guys. It's fun to play with. It's free fall smooth uh, closing it. Uh, there's no issue on the lockup on it. And let's talk about that lockup real quick. Uh, absolutely no play in the lockup. Um, the compression lock, I will always say, whether people agree with me or not, this is a highly modified liner lock. Um, the issues that you have with liner locks, and I'll say liner lock about my least favorite lock of all, uh, the issues you have with it, with failures in liner locks, um, are decreased exponentially in this type of lock. Uh, it basically, you're on the back here, you've got a tab, it's trapped. Um, the actual tab, you know, the wide tab that's trapped in between the tang and the, uh, the locking surface there, the stop pin, um, 
it would have to to you would have to totally fail that piece of steel and I've seen it done in heavy duty use but that is use that exceeds anything I would ever do with this knife because yet again I feel like Spyderco's, uh, you know, their core models are a little bit more on the delicate side. They're more refined cutters, and therefore I use them as a more refined cutters. But nobody can argue that the compression lock um, combined with the, the collared pivot style just doesn't give you fantastic fun to play with, fun to flick action on this knife. Um, you know, the lock is stronger and more fail resistant than a liner lock. Uh, you know, there's no lock stick. It's easy to access with both hands. Uh, it does it does require, you know, a slight maneuver. And when you go to unlock it, you've got to rotate the knife and you've got to remove your fingers from the path of the blade because it's going to drop smoothly by itself, guys. Um, but... I don't boohoo that type of thing too much because honestly, every lock type, uh, if you've got a cold steel with a triad lock and you're holding your knife, you still, you've got to modify your grip for that. Uh, if you've got a frame lock, you've got to modify your grip with that. If you've got an axis lock, you've got to modify your grip for that. Uh, all locks, you have to modify your grip to close the knife. So not a big deal there. All right, overall, on this knife, I love it. I love this knife, guys. I regret, I personally regret not owning a paramilitary tube before I did. Um, it's amazing that I handled so many of them and sold so many of them um, that I, I just didn't get it before. And it was all in my mindset. It was all in that... You know, I wanted heavier, you know, tough as a tank and heavy as a vault door and, and you know, all the mixed up crap that I can say. But I love this knife. The handle size is perfect. The handle ergos are perfect. Uh, at least for my hand, for my medium size hand, this palm swell across the width is perfect. Finger choil up front. Um, slot bird's beak in the back in my grip my thumb it just naturally falls right to that thumb ramp and then you can choke up into this uh, um, forward pseudo choil uh, and get close to the cutting edge for refined work um, you know what this knife is very comfortable to use in uh, multiple grips reverse grip uh, draw grip um, you know, there's not a whole lot of crazy anything going on with the handle. It's it's a very organic, very ergonomic, and uh, pretty neutral. So, I love this knife. I love it. I love the sliciness of the blade. I love this blade still so far because I haven't had to resharpen it. Uh, it has cut and cut well. Nice thin edge. Uh, the paramilitary too. I'm going to add a couple of more to my collection. I wish I would have got in on the Blade HQ uh, Jade G10 and M4 models, and I miss that. Uh, hopefully, they'll do something like that again because I'd love to have it. And you've got the new, the carbon fiber with 52100 blade steel. I might look at that. Um, although it's a little more pricey than I think it should be for their uh, carbon fiber G10 laminate, which is what I think the handle material actually is. I could be wrong about that, and if I am, I apologize. But in closing, I'm going to say yes, 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 yes. I mean, come on, guys. That is that is just a beautiful knife, uh, nearly perfect ergos four position pocket clip, high end blade steel, uh, a fantastic lock, fantastic action, um, just overall just a fantastic design and in my opinion um, probably the best overall design that Spyderco does. Uh, everybody's got their favorite but I honestly I think overall this is just the best, most accessible, uh, most utilitarian 
a good combination of that and ease of carry. Uh, I just think it's a fantastic knife. So go out and buy you 15 paramilitaries, buy one of each kind that's made in every color and tell Spyderco that I sent you and I'm sorry that I, I didn't like them too much before. All right, guys. Well, once again, I say thank you for watching one of my videos. This has been Baz on Blades. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you later.